What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a brief trading update on what I did today on the 18th of April in 2019 in terms of my trading. And we're also very briefly going to be talking about some stocks and ETFs that I'm keeping my eye on here for the rest of this week. So before I do get into that, guys, I want to let you know, typically every single Sunday, and I'm sure a lot of you that have been following me know this already, I make a video on stocks that I'm watching for the upcoming week. And I typically take requests from you guys Guys, the viewers, the subscribers, uh, you know, of a couple of stocks that you're watching that you want me to talk about, right? So if you have any ticker symbols, drop them down below on this video. Just leave a comment very quickly right now if you want to on any tickers you want me to talk about in Sunday's video. And if you're also in our group chat, free link down below in the description box, you can put it in the call out section in that group chat and I'll look at it and then I'll talk about it on Sunday's video. So now that I got that out of the way, let's just hop into what the market ended up doing today. Starting off here with the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded United States companies. So we see Ended up closing the day here up $4.58 to be exact, up 0.16%. Nothing too crazy. We ended up closing under that level of resistance at about $29.05. We'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes. The Dow Jones ended up popping up very aggressively today, to be quite frank with you all. Up 4.42%, so a pretty strong green day here, up $110 on the dot for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the NASDAQ, guys, it's currently up $26, up 0.34%. And if we hop here to the one day, one minute, we can see exactly where it ended up closing at 4 p.m. So it does seem like it did end up, uh, you know, pushing up here a bit after hours. We ended up closing about eight points lower from where we are now. So give or take 18 point green day on the NASDAQ. And that's a good sign, guys. We're, uh, we're pushing back up here. You know, it seems like we want to retest that all-time high that we did hit yesterday. And it seems like a good, you know, continuation of the uptrend, right? We hit all-time highs, pulled back, tested that 50 SMA as a support, which has been a support. And now we're popping up to retest the all-time highs. So hopping back over here to the SPX We've been talking about these two levels on the S&P 500, one of them being 2905, the other one being 2915. These two levels are very, very critical and they're very important to look at in terms of where the S&P 500 is. And really why we are looking at these levels is because they've been strong levels of resistance for the overall index, right? And where do we derive these levels from? Well, if we look back a couple of months ago, we can see the 2915 level was a support from back in September of 2018. And whenever a support level is broken beneath of, right, like, like we saw here, it becomes a resistance, right? Very, very simple. And the next level is around 2905, which also happened to be a support from back in uh, uh, September of 2018. And actually, I was wrong. This was the support from back in uh, 20, uh, uh, September, right? It was the 2905 level. The 2915 level was actually a resistance from uh, the end of August of 2018, which again, we, we you know popped above that resistance, made it a support, and when we broke the support, that obviously became a resistance again. So all you have to know is these two levels, that is where we're fighting right now for the S&P. And if we just hop in a bit closer here, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We talked about this in yesterday's video. We topped at about 29.15, got rejected, retested it the next day. This was on uh, Wednesday. 
right? Wednesday, we retested it, sold off again. We actually broke the 2905 level of support on that day, making it a resistance. And today, guys, take a look at what happened. We ended up gapping up a bit in the morning and we got rejected at 2905 on the dot where we ended up selling off. We made a lower low at 2893 from the previous. So we can see the bearish pattern here over the past two days on the S&P. Then we popped back up, retested the 2905 level briefly broke above it to about 2908 then we ended up selling off towards the end of the market where we ended up closing right under right around honestly that level of resistance at 2905 so right now guys Overall, on, on this five-day, five-minute chart, you know, the SPX is looking a bit bearish, right? We can see it closed down this day. The next day, it closed a bit lower. But the fact that we did close a bit higher here, that's a decent sign that we do want to pop up. But the fact that we closed a bit below the 2905 level, that is still telling me you know, we are a bit bearish based off of these past three days. So for this upcoming week, guys, again, we don't have the market open tomorrow. We have a long three-day weekend here in terms of the stock market. But on Monday, what I'm going to be watching is quite simple, right? Are we going to potentially sell off and get rejected again by this 2905 level and maybe push to another lower low, right? Are we going to maybe crack below this level, right, which is the lower low that we're talking about, are we going to maybe get to the 2880s again? And at that point, if we do do that on the longer term charts on the 184 hour, that is going to be the confirming factor that we need to see if we make that lower low on the smaller term chart for us to get closer to the 50 SMA that's been a support over the past couple of months. And if we do end up pushing it to the 2880s, guys, that's going to be in my eyes, the beginning of this correction on the S&P 500. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of a potential pullback. Let's say we pop up on, on Monday. Who knows, guys? You know, that could that could very well happen here, right? We pop up. We're going to be looking at the 2915 level of resistance, which has been a resistance again over the past couple of trading days. And if we break that level of 2915, that's going to be pretty much a one-stop shop to the all-time highs that we see here from back a couple of months months ago at 29.40 and 91 cents on the S&P 500. So those are a couple of things that I'm watching on that index. The Dow Jones, very simple guys. We've been talking about this over the past couple of videos, how the Dow ended up breaking out of that 26,400 level of resistance. We maintained it as a support for Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, if I recall correctly, right? Tuesday, Wednesday, we maintain that old resistance, which was a resistance, very clear. We popped above it. We maintained it as a new support right exactly at $26,000. $400. And today we actually popped up and we actually formed a higher high here. We tested 26,600 and it's looking like we are filling up to that gap. We are filling that gap, right, that we've been talking about up to 26,700, 26,800, that rough general area, right, which is the next resistance that we're looking at in terms of the Dow Jones. So now for this upcoming week, right, are we going to, you know, push up, test that resistance again, you know, up to, uh, you know, 26,700, 26,800. Are we going to potentially break out of that level of resistance and test the all time highs, which really are a stone's throw away from where we are right now, guys? Literally about 400 points are, that is all we need really to get to those all time highs at about $26,951. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about that. Are we going to get to all time time highs in the Dow. We already saw we hit all-time highs again in the NASDAQ this week. Is the Dow Jones next? Is the S&P next? Let me know what you guys think there down below in the comment section. So let's talk about very quickly about the NASDAQ, what ended up happening. I kind of already summarized it a couple of minutes ago, but we ended up pulling back from the all-time high that we hit at 77.33. We tested that 50 SMA support. Very good sign that we made a higher low. We want to continue this uptrend. And now it's looking like we want to retest that all-time high again. So very brief, very simple. For this upcoming week, 
Are we going to break the all-time high, which again is a resistance right now, right? Are we going to break that all-time high, make a new all-time high, or are we going to double top here, which is a possibility, right, and maybe retest that 50 SMA, that 7630 level of support, which was an old resistance here. We broke above it. It's now a new support. Are we going to retest that level on a, on a potential pullback? These are some things running through my mind that I'm watching for the NASDAQ right now. So that is really the overall market update, right? The NASDAQ close to all-time highs, the Dow, you know, close to all-time highs, quite frankly, the S&P and the whole entire market, right? It's just close to all-time highs right now, guys. Keep an eye on that. And in my personal opinion, I'm, uh, you know, and what I'm doing, right, I'm approaching this with caution, right? In terms of my swing trades, I'm not buying a, a crap ton of uh, companies right now to swing trade. I'm being a bit more cautious. And for those of you all that have been following the videos, you probably have gotten a sense of that, right? Because I haven't been trading an insane amount recently. I've been sticking to, you know, solid companies here. I've been sticking to charts and patterns that I understand, like Apple, right? And we'll get into that here. Um, you know, these are just what I've been sticking to, right? And in terms of Apple, we might as well just start talking about the trading update at this point. Apple, you know, if you guys watched my video yesterday, I was talking about how I was most likely going to take my profits on both of my swing trades. And in terms of Apple, guys, I actually ended up taking my profits, believe it or not, once we cracked above $204 today, right? And this is mostly because I just wanted to lock in the profits before the three-day long-term weekend that we have, you know, heading into this week. And I wanted to reevaluate these positions on Monday to potentially re-enter, right? Is this a smart move? I don't know, right? This might be the complete wrong move, right? This could end up popping up to 207, 206, 208 next week where I'd miss a lot of profits and I'm okay with that, right? Because again, I'm up on this position, right? I just want to lock in those profits and hopefully we end up pulling back and retesting 200 this week or next week rather where I can end up getting back in, right? So for all you guys that have been following, you know, you might not know this, you may know this, but I was in Apple from around the 197.40 to 197.50 level. And if we just see a quick, um, you know, how much money I made in terms of percent, you know, I made about a 3% um, profit here on a three, four, five day swing trade. And that's not a lot of money to a lot of people, right? That's not that big of a gain to a lot of people. But for me, I'm cool with that. You know, I'm all about the consistency, right? And I'm again, I'm cool with that. So I wanted to just lock in those profits, right? And maybe if we pull back and retest maybe 201, 200, maybe if we retest this 50 simple moving average, that could be an entry point on Apple for this upcoming week. And another thing that kind of worried me, it's not too crazy, but the RSI is a bit overbought here, right? We're almost at the 70 level. We, excuse me, we have earnings here in the next 10, 12 days. So maybe I might even wait till after earnings to get into Apple because we do expect, you know, iPhone sales to be down. The earnings report for Apple, it's not really expected to be too great. So I kind of want to see how this reacts to that in terms of what the stock does. You know, the investor, um, you know, the trader sentiment out there, how the market feels about it. This is something that I want to see in terms of their earnings report, to be quite frank with you all, before, you know, hopping back into the stock. But that's pretty much it, the trading update really just took a 3% profit. And for those of you guys that watched my video yesterday, I was talking about how I was most likely going to sell out of AMD as well, which is exactly what I ended up doing, right? And we talked about how AMD has been trading in this horizontal pattern here over the past couple of days. It's really haven't, it really hasn't gone below $27. We noticed the support here, here. We retested it um, yesterday. We honestly retested it this morning pre-market and we popped up. And we see the resistance 
at about $28. It's been really hovering in that range and I've been telling myself and writing in the chat, talking about it in these videos, how I want to see AMD above $28 before adding more money to the position, right? That was my initial goal. And the fact that we haven't been getting there, it's been fighting to get over there. I feel like the bears have been taking over every time it tries to at least hold a little bit above 28. You know, I just wanted to liquidate the position, take the small profit that I did have and wait till next week. And again, AMD is another one of those companies that's reporting earnings, right? I might just wait till after they report earnings, right? Because I don't know what the stock's going to do. No one knows. And I don't want to be in a stock that let's say their earnings aren't that great. They end up going down five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent You know, I don't want to really be a part of that. So let's just see on the one day, one minute. I actually ended up getting in or out rather, believe it or not, at 28 or not 28, 27 and 80, right? I literally saw this big pump up and I was, I was telling myself this morning, this is my opportunity to just get out with a very small profit. And that's what I ended up doing, guys. Ended up getting out of AMD, was in it for about a week at about $27.40 roughly was my average cost. Again, I wanted to add more money if we held above $28. We didn't hold above $28 at all for this week and for uh, you know the latter half of last week. So I just ended up, you know, getting out of this position. No big deal. Profit is profit again. And I'm just going to reevaluate it if we do end up, you know, holding 28. But most likely, of course, I'll let you guys know in these videos, most likely I'm just going to be waiting after they report earnings. And for those of you guys that don't know on Think or Swim, it's very simple. You can see when companies are reporting earnings by simply looking down here, right? You see this little, uh, looks like a telephone. Actually, no, I think it's a bell, right? That, that, that's a bell or something like that. That, if you hover over it, right, you can see earnings conference call on 430, um, uh, uh, 430 So I guess that is a phone if it's saying conference call, but that's how you know when companies are reporting earnings, right? If we go back over here to Apple, we can see the exact same thing. We hover over it, 430, right? So Apple and AMD, they're actually reporting on the same day on the 30th. And that's not next week. That's probably the Monday of the following week, which is going to be a pretty crazy week towards the end of April because we do have a lot of the big names reporting. We have Google. I believe Google's towards the end of April, maybe beginning of May. But nonetheless, these next two, three, weeks guys you know google amazon you know i believe microsoft as well of course apple these big name companies that have a lot of weight on the market that have a lot of um you know uh what's it called what's the word guys they have a lot of uh impact on the market that's the word impact they're reporting earnings so keep an eye on on those. So let's just briefly guys talk about a couple of stocks here. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because typically on Sunday, I'm spending more time on, um, you know, talking about the stocks that I'm watching. But let's just do a quick little recap on a couple of ETFs here that have been getting hammered down, maybe opening up some opportunities. So one of them is natural gas, guys. Natural gas, it's not the ETF itself, but we trade an ETF <clears throat> combo UGAS and DGAS, right? So DGAS, you can imagine, has been doing very well because DGAS is an ETF that goes up whenever natural gas is selling off. And you can see natural gas has been nothing but a downtrend here over the past couple of trading days and it hit a low of 247.8. So maybe this upcoming week, if we do start to see a little push back up for it to retest that 50 simple moving average, this could be the opportunity to hop into the inverse, which is you gas that goes up whenever natural gas is going up. And that's the beauty of these inverse ETFs, guys. You can play one for the downside of a future, right? In this case, you can play D gas on the downside. And then when it potentially finds a bottom and it starts to push back up to test, you know, old resistances, in this case, you know, the 50 simple moving average, you can play the inverse, which in this case is U gas that goes up whenever natural gas is going up. So I'm watching and waiting to see, are we going to maybe see some buying power here? Are we going to push up? You know, the RSI is extremely oversold uh, uh, right now. 
You know, we're pushing down to the 11, 10, 10, 11 range, which is insane. So keep an eye on that one for this upcoming week. And another thing I want to mention, guys, these futures, they're going to be open tomorrow, actually. We're going to see, um, you know, how this uh, movement is tomorrow. And, you know, maybe if it does end up popping up, we're obviously going to miss that, which is why I don't, um, you know, you know, because D-Gaz and you guys won't be tradable, but... That's why I don't want to, um, you know, set too uh, too much of an ex expectation because a lot of things can change from now to Monday, right? For all we know, this can pop up, hit the 50 SMA, and already make its move back down before Monday, and we're going to miss the trade at that point, right? For those of you guys that know what I mean. So um, another one that's been battered down is JNUG, guys. This one's absolutely unbelievable. You know, we saw the nine support. We thought it was going to hold. It broke. I called the next support at 850-ish, 840-850. We broke that. Now, honestly, the next place we can see it potentially going is going to be around 750, maybe 760. At that point, you know, maybe if we see a reversal in gold at that point, maybe we'll see a little bit of a support there on JNUG. And if gold starts to head back into the 1280s, JNUG, again, which is an ETF that goes up whenever gold's going up, that can pose a pretty decent opportunity at that point, right? So um, let's see a couple of other ones. You know, really, I am watching AMD and Apple, to be completely honest with you guys as well. Even though I sold out of them, of course, I'm watching for re-entries, like I said earlier. I want to see if gold and natural gas are potentially going to recover to play the bull ETFs. And that's really all I'm, you know, gaining and looking at right now you know, from the data that we got in today's session. So I don't want to keep you guys too long. I'm going to end off the video here. Drop a comment down below again if you want me to talk about any specific stocks or ETFs in the next video. I would love to do that for you. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel, guys, I have two links down below in the description box. One of them being the Discord, the other one being the Facebook group. Both of those are 100% free of charge. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel if you're new, guys. Why not? I'm posting a lot of stock market content, investing, trading, personal finance, updates, news, all of that stuff dealing with the stock market is on this channel. So I hope you guys enjoy your long weekend. If you're celebrating Easter this weekend, I hope you guys enjoy your holiday. I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great one. Peace out.